Mark, I know you want to do a, a another follow on from the no go area of yes. evangelism. Yeah. And you know, we, we go to church and we, we do our thing and we love going we love being with the people that we've been yeah. in our community. Yeah. And uh, do you know one of the things <laughs> yeah, mostly yeah. <laughs> one of the things I have you know, one of the things I've I've sort of looking at the people like say where I'm working or you know, in the place where I live and I mm. think, you know, how on earth can they relate to to what goes on at my church? Yeah, and um, I'm sure for for many Christians, it's like you know they love to see you know their their neighbour saved, whoever that neighbour is, whether it's somebody yeah. at work, whether it's somebody who lives literally next door to them. Yeah. But they've they have this thing about you know how can we you know how can my church become more relevant for that person? Yeah, and it, it is a dilemma, isn't it? It is, and it's it's a an important. Thing to consider as a church is there's a mission principle called contextualization. I was involved with a mission for a number of years, and we learned all about this stuff. And you would train people to go into cultures, and you know. Okay, you, so can I? Can I? Yeah. All right. Thirty seconds. Contextualization. What's okay. Because well, I'll tell you. Basically, it is learning what what a culture is like, what communicates within that culture, understanding the people, and then presenting the gospel in a way that they can understand. So, um, saying to Eskimos, you know, God is the good shepherd. They've never seen a sheep. Right. Yeah. I, I so you you would consider whether he, he would be the good penguin, for instance. You know, that's taking <laughs> it to an extreme. But um, uh, you know, that's a thing you would discuss. Sure. And uh, images of fire and water can mean different things within in different cultures. But ultimately, Jesus was the ultimate contextualization of the love of God. So he became a man to walk the earth, so he so that we could relate to God. On a on a kind of man to man basis, I see. and we could actually relate to him as someone close, personal, rather than someone distant. And contextualization is all about that. I don't I know whether it was thirty seconds, but that was, that, that was good though. Yeah. I was with you on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So how do we translate? Because you, you see lots of churches trying to do worship difference, and they think, you yeah. Know, what, you know, what, what, what's your feeling on that? Yeah, it's an interesting one because we often get our, asked because we do lively worship, don't we? Yeah. yeah, and it's not everyone's cup of tea can accept that uh but people ask how could we possibly bring non-christians into a, 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 a church that is lively like that and because we're quite full-on worship aren't we at times yeah. and um uh the, the the fact is is that um people move get involved with full-on things or not so full-on things in all levels of society you know um you only need to go along to a the Scarlet's rugby match, yeah. the stadium, the new stadium just up the road here. And it's pretty full on. These guys are pretty wild, you know, and they shout at the ref. And, yeah. and no one thinks that weird. You know, you've got doctors and even some of the pastors, yeah. you know, have been there and they're swearing at the ref, you know. <laughs> and uh, there's a bit of contextualization for you, which is a bit, you know, dodgy <laughs> there. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, that's. There are other things in society that are like that. We're drawn to more than just something that's comfortable, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, what, what, that feeling that we have then when we say, okay, well, you know, if only we did it this way, mm. then that would make it better. Yeah. You know, what is it about the gospel then? How, mm. how do we contextualize the gospel yeah. in that sense? Yeah. Well, I think it's important that we do it in a way that we've got faith for. You know, the gospel is a power to save those who believe. It's a whole thing about faith. So whilst we do try and adapt to the culture we're trying to reach... Uh, that isn't what, in the end, reaches people. I see. That, um, for instance, you know, we, I think we've had a phase of removing the cringe factor from church. Yeah? yeah. And that's a good thing to do. There are lots of things which are the language of church which do not relate. Mm. You know, get rid of them. Mm. Yeah. But that isn't the power to save. I see. You know, um, all it does is remove obstacles. And uh, uh, different churches are going for different models. And uh, we're all hoping that this is the one. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have a problem with hardly any of the models that are out there. Mm. Um, most of them wouldn't be my personal choice because I haven't got faith for them. Sure. And ultimately, we've got to have faith for them. Mm. I had an experience once, um, you know, I was doing sound for uh, an evangelistic campaign. And this worship leader got up and she immediately spoke in tongues. And don't worry, it's the language of God. And and honestly, I sat there thinking, this is dreadful. You know, this is not going to relate. 
people are just going to think this is really weird. And then a whole lot of people got saved. Mm. And uh, a Palestinian got saved. And, and, and the Salvations went through a whole chain of restaurants. Mm. And, uh, and I reflected on that afterwards. And I thought, well, I think they could still perhaps change their approach a little bit. Mm. But ultimately, what was it that saved them? The fact that they had faith for the power of God in that situation. And you know what? I got a faith for that even if I get things wrong, that God can still save. Because ultimately, the power to save has to be something higher than um, our ability to get it right. And uh, because if, you know, we're saved by grace, aren't we? But we somehow feel that church and evangelism is by works. Uh, got to get it right and then people will be saved and actually if you can just rise above that and have faith for the fact that God's power is ready to save even when you get it wrong because it's not dependent on you I think it's liberating